Good morning. Again. <laughs> We're good. When the presence of the Lord in his presence, a lot of things can be taken care of. A lot of, a lot of our anxieties. And maybe you don't have anxieties. <laughs> maybe, maybe, uh, maybe I was misled when I thought but when I get older, things will get easier. Ah, wait a minute. Where did that come from? Well, in some ways, maybe like we should be wiser. You know, we learn from the from our mistakes more than our our accomplishments. Are you with me? How many remember better when it it, it sunk in? It hurt a little bit. Yeah. Well, I had a pretty good week. It was you know. Warm. Um, I had a job on Pelican Lake. Was just some flat work, concrete flat work, a couple steps, you know. And but I met a lot of new people. I, I I'm always amazed. I, I like I guess observing people. Some guys they come into their the workplace and they don't even give you eye contact. They're just like. They're just staring, and other guys are like, oh, well, hi, good morning, yeah, that's, I like that. I like the little you know, acknowledgement, and it's interesting. I, I find that uh, being in the marketplace is <laughs> where we're tested. We're, we're tested with who we are, and, and just sometimes... A little gesture, a smile, or giving someone a word of a uh, good job. It looks good, great, beautiful. And uh, the rain's held off, the concrete, you know, was, I hope it's okay yet. I, I worry about these things. I, overnight, could have been a thunder shower right off the eve, drip, drip, hard, hail, whatever. I'm here when I worry about things too much sometimes. Coming into, um, you see, look at that. I found a pick. <laughs> uh, here's here's our here's the here's the problem. We com compartmentalize our lives. Okay, we're going to work concrete today. I should be the same person in the Lord in the workplace as I am here now. Let's just be real. That's what the Lord has called us to be. We're not trying to prove anything in ourselves. We're just saying by the grace of God. So the title is What Matters Most Interesting writing, isn't it? You've got to look at that for a while. It's a question mark. What matters most? Are you confused yet? Is it just we get the job done, or is it how did we do the job? If we just... Do it for that they have to. It loses so much value. Rather than saying, you know, I am the Lord's representative. I do it as unto the Lord. And I'm called to. I get to walk with him. He goes with me into the marketplace. Previous chapter, Paul was addressing to Timothy. We're in Timothy, by the way, 1 Timothy 4. 
Here's a young man, Timothy. God is calling him into the pastoral ministry to lead a church, to preach word, the word truth, to preach even, a, even when there's people that are going to come against him. They're going to come and rise up and be, try to, to discourage him. Verse 12 says, let no one look down on your youthfulness. So that, that, I don't know how old he was. I'm dressing 30-ish. 30-ish. That's a good young youth. I like, I like the 30s. I like the 20s, but the 30s were, I had a little more maturity, a little more confidence. But don't let, don't let people because you're young, don't be afraid of that. Thank God, God is using young people. Thank God he's raising up young people to reach their generation. Amen? To take the gospel into their world. So I better read the text. Before we get to the reading of the text, Satan has been involved with attacking the church or attacking the family first, but attacking God's people since the beginning. One verse out of Genesis chapter 3. And you know this story. This is where Satan came to tempt the woman and the man. And the serpent said to the woman, you surely shall not die. Direct contrary to what God said previously, if you eat of the tree that I say you cannot eat, you will die. Oh, Satan says, oh, God didn't say that. This is exactly what Satan does. He's so deceiving people that it's okay to live your own life. Do it your way. Live for self. Don't care about other people. That's exactly uh, the exact opposite of the word of truth. The church is called to conduct themselves. Verse 15, previous chapter of 1 Timothy. See, he calls the household of God, the church of the living God, the pillar, the support of truth. The, the church is the people of God. We have a building, right? We call it a church, but the real church is you. People. Without people, it's just a shell. It's a, it's a tool. It's a tool. It's a place where we meet. The church is the people of God. Every believer around our community is the church of God. Every person around our world is our brother and sister. Now, verse 1, Paul is under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. As he says in another place in Timothy, 2 Timothy 3, 15, 16, 17. All scripture is inspired by God, right? Profitable for teaching, correction, training, and righteousness that man of God may be equipped for every good work. I had to memorize those scriptures in college, so it's still sticking with me. Praise the Lord. How many believe we're getting close to the end? That's obvious. But in their day, they were believing they were getting close to the end. They're like, come Lord Jesus. Take us out of here. It's enough suffering. Verse 1, the Spirit explicitly says that in, the la that in latter times, some will fall away from the faith. Paying attention to deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons. How many know we live in a spiritual world, so to speak? Very curious. People are very curious in the spirit realm. But the word of God says, watch out. 
for the deceitful spirit, the enemy, Satan. Watch out for that which is not of God, that which is counterfeit, that which is phony, that which seems good, but till you really get to know the heart of the person. By their fruits you shall know them, false prophets. So they had false prophets, they had false teachers in those days. Jesus said in the end, there will be false prophets. And people that will even say, I am the Christ. This is really getting serious. Wow. We need to keep our hearts in the right place. Some will fall away from the faith. That's a sad statement. Some will begin to buy into the deception. Well, I can live my life for myself. I can get to heaven in another way. That's a deception. Jesus said that many hearts grew cold or will grow cold. In Matthew's Gospel 24, verse 10, speaking toward the end time, a tribulation time. In fact, there will be seven years that the book of Revelation talks about. You and I do not want to be here. And I believe the Lord is going to spare us. But at that time, during the tribulation, many will fall away and will deliver up one another. Many false prophets will arise, will mislead many. And because lawlessness is increased, most people's love will grow cold. But this is so obvious. Lawlessness is, is absolutely... I mean, we can get we we can get pretty discouraged if if we just if we just listen to only listen to the news. We get pretty discouraged, but we've got to we we take it just enough, just enough of the news, so that we know how we should pray, and we know what is the signs that Jesus prophesied. The Spirit explicitly, verse 1, back to 1 Timothy chapter 4. Some will, Spirit explicitly says that in latter times, some will fall away from the faith. Not everyone. Thank God for those who stay true. And they stick it out. See, what does it matter, Jesus said? What does it profit if you gain the whole world? Right? What's the rest? Lose your soul. Your eternal person. Your soul, which is going to live on for eternity. Good news is we can live for all eternity. That's good news. For the believer, for those who will trust in Jesus, their faith is solid in the Lord himself. The next verse is by means of, well, I didn't finish all the verse. Paying attention to deceitful spirits, doctors that he, I did read that, but isn't there just a lot of that stuff going on? I don't look for him. When Satan raises his head, I say, in Jesus' name. You may feel oppression, but I believe the believer in Jesus Christ has the whole armor. He don't have to worry about being possessed by a demon. I know that demonic behavior can come against us. Listen, greater is he that is in you. Why would Jesus let a demon in you? He's in the house. Demons are afraid because Jesus' blood is applied to your heart. Let's receive that. And if you got stuff going on in your family, I'm just saying, in, in your ex family as a whole, you stand in the gap. 
And you pray over the house, you pray over their hearts, you pray over their workplaces, God will level and distract and push out any demonic activity. It's a battle. It's real. It's very real. But we don't, it's, I don't buy into it. We can have a demon as a believer. You may be oppressed, but I, I believe I'm in good hands. I'm going to accept that. I'm going to believe that. Listen, chapter uh, 4, verse 2, here's where it gets serious. By means of the hypocrisy of liars, this is big words. Seared in their own conscience. Look, that, that word seared is serious. When a person comes to a place where they don't care or they just don't have a conscience, that's a serious place. They're seared, as with a branding iron. Men who forbid marriage and advocate abstaining from foods. What is he saying? He's saying they're making up rules in order to promote their demonology, their doctrine of demonology. They're making up other things that's not scriptural. He says, for everything created by God is good, verse 4. Nothing is to be rejected. He was talking about even uh, things which created to eat. There it is, verse uh, 3. Foods which God cre has created to be gratefully shared and by those. We can get caught up in all kinds of things. I'm not going to go there. In other words, God is able to give us his idea and his mindset and his perspective. That we are to live walking with Jesus, a life that is keeping the faith. What really matters when it all boils down, when it all comes down to the last breath, what really matters is, did I keep the faith? Did I honor your word? Did I love people? Did I treat people as you would have me treat them? Was I fair? Was I honest? And we want to have. That's a lifestyle. That's our value. That's our purpose of being, is to present Jesus in this very broken world that we live in. Jesus lived amongst people that were just as broken as they are now, and he would make a difference. He would heal some. He would speak to others, deliver them. He would speak the truth, anointing. He would speak life, because life now is temporal. Look at these next verses. Verse 6 in the chapter says, In pointing out these things in the brethren, to the brethren, you will be good servant. You'll be a good servant of Christ Jesus, constantly nourished on the words of the faith. That tells me something. If I'm going to keep the faith, I've got to keep putting it in there. My old mind gets to work, and my old mind gets to forget things. My old, the old mind of me begins to think on things that are troublesome. And I've got to bring myself back to the nourishment. I've got to tie myself into the vine. I've got to apply myself to his spirit. Be nourished on the words of the faith. And of the sound doctrine, there is that which is that a sound doctrine. It is directed by God. The doctrine that we are only saved by grace. I can't work for it. That we are forgiven because of the blood of Jesus. That's sound doctrine. That we don't have to work ourselves up like they did in the times of Elijah. Right? Remember with Elijah. Look it up. 
Remember that, that duel they had? And the, 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 the false uh, prophets, they were gashing themselves and having a, oh my goodness. Trying to get their gods to wake up. And Elijah just said, let fire come down. And he blew them away. Because he was serving the true God. He had a relationship with God. He walked with God. You see, what's going to keep us in the thick and thin is your relationship. When you're walking with God, you want to walk through. You can walk through anything. When you walk through the fire, that it even will not harm you. The three Hebrew children, when they were in the fiery furnace, I'm not saying that you won't get hurt at times. You won't feel pain. But there are times when you can't believe how you made it through. You can't go look back and how, 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 did you have the, how did you make it through? How did you have the energy? He'll give you the energy when you need it. I believe that with all my heart. I, I, I can feel tired some days, wonder how I'm going to make it, but he'll give you the energy when you need it. And you need to whisper his name, Jesus, help me. As you go along, Jesus, help me. Give me, give me the strength one more time. Even Samson prayed. He failed. You know, Samson had strength supernatural from God. But he remembered. Remember Samson when he said, Lord, remember me. There was a time when Samson walked with God and God honored his faith. And he took those temple mounts down. And enemies were destroyed. You see, no matter where you are in life, it's, no, it's not too late to start over. At least have a, re, a regroup. It's never too late. Until he comes, then it'll be too late. Then it'll be harder yet. We don't have time to go into everything. There's a lot here. But look at this. The life that we have right now is so temporal. I'm going to skip down to verse 8. Bodily discipline is only of little profit. Now I know we live in a culture. You got to look such a way to be cool. Right? That's our culture. We don't have to buy into that. We can do the best we can taking care of our bodies. Right? Go for it. But we also know at the same time, this body is not going to live forever. Right? But we don't lose hope in that. Because we're going to get a new body. Amen? We're going to get a brand new body in heaven. And so what he's saying... Don't put your whole life now an emphasis on what you've got going now. And bodily discipline is only a little profit. It's a little profit. You gain a little. But godliness is profitable for all things since it holds promise to the present life and also for the life to come. Have you ever met people? They were up in their years and they were bent over, yet they had the sweetest presence. Happy. Joyful. Why? Well, because they were living according to the promises. We get to live this life because he's preparing us for the next life. So what really matters is basically, do I live for him now? While I'm here, yes. Should I treat people honestly? Yes. Should I even forgive those who've hurt me? Yes, Lord. But you will be set free. You will be set free. Godliness is profitable for all things. It's still the best 
way to live now. The abundant life that Jesus talked about, the abundant life, right? Now, a little heaven and earth is his presence in you. When you know he's speaking to you, you're hearing, and you're sensing his nearness, you're sensing his favor, you're sensing his blessing, you're sensing his forgiveness. He gives you the understanding as you're going. How many times have I laid at wake at night working? Oh, did I get that measurement right? Is that height right? I'll do this sometimes. And when I get to the job, it's not a big deal. Oh, it got bigger overnight. And I get to the job, I was worried about this. Is it our mind funny sometimes? We can get overthink. Overthink. And so the discipline thing here is bring my mind to the place, bring my mind in submission and at peace. It's a good way to live. It's not always the case. But I believe we can strive for that. Here's the word strive. Verse 10. We're still talking about the life that we have now. Verse 10 says, for it is for this we labor and strive. Wait a minute. What are we talking about here? Because we have fixed our hope on the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of believers. Ministry or serving is hard work. Missionary work is hard work. Learn the language. Don't ask me. I, I figured, I barely got through English. Lord, don't call me that, you know. Learning the culture, being patient. The missionary must have the mind of Christ. Well, they're going to serve people that are not going to understand. But the missionary goes to live in the foreign place or the people. Now, don't get me wrong. We are missionaries right now. When we leave this place today, you're going into your mission field. Maybe you'll go to a restaurant. Maybe you'll go home. Wherever it may be, it's the place God has called you. And it becomes more than just a place to earn income, a place to live or sleep. It's your mission. And so this what, is, what really matters is how I live my life when I leave these four walls. That's what really matters. See, people get to know me as a cement guy, but then they hear, I get people saying, I heard of you, I heard of you, are you a pastor? Well, I guess so. I suppose I am. Well, I'm a Christian first. So you have to explain. What some people receive it fine, others like, oh, I gotta change my words. 
I said, listen, don't do it for me. Do it for God. In a way, it's refreshing. If I were to only hang around Christians, let's get this scenario. If I were to only hang around Christians, in some bigger churches, this happens. You're always around Christians. So you have to work hard to go to the unbeliever. You have to work at going to where lost people are. Clarence St. John, was, he was a hero for this. He was, just, he was an outhouse preacher. That's what he called himself. He was an outhouse pastor. He would spend so much time in the office, so much time doing this and this, but quite a bit of time just getting to know the people in town. That's great. Becoming a pastor to the community. So Paul is saying to Timothy, don't be ashamed of your youth. You stick to the truth. You stick with me. Stick with the Lord. You don't back down. You, you put on the whole armor because the life that is to come, the life that we live right now is important. Because if we can influence someone else to make a decision for Jesus, yes, then we're bringing someone with us. And I don't know. Once in a while, I'll sit this thought, I can't take it with me. I can't take it with me. I can't. I don't want to get caught up with stuff. I don't need to go there. What did Paul, he said, over in 2 Corinthians 4, Verses 8 through 18. There's a pile of scriptures. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not despairing. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. It's an average day. Always caring about in the body the dying of Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. What did he say? Always caring about in the body the dying of Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. Oh, oh because Jesus died, his life can be lived out in my body. Right? For we who live are constantly being delivered over to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. Big words didn't get that so much. Let me plain it. Let me try to plain it down. A little. We're constantly being bothered by the devil, by the opposition. Why does this happen now? After all, I've served you, Lord. I'm just putting it in. So we have this battle that is going on, verse 13, but having the same spirit of faith. According to what is written, I believe, therefore I spoke. We also believe, therefore also we speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will present us with you. Why was Paul so adamant? Why was he so convinced that Jesus was raised? Because he was uttering threats. Paul was uttering threats. Saul first, then Paul. He was kicking against the ways of God, and Jesus confronted him in his face and opened his eyes. Oh, Lord, help us to pray those prayers of miraculous salvation. Bring them home. Bring them in. Pray this prayer. Wake them up with a dream, Lord. Wake them up with a dream. Reveal yourself. The 
that they cannot deny their need for you. We have, we have that authority. We have been called. And see, the old little word called discouragement. How many times we pray this prayer and it seems to never go anywhere. Dayton will come and say, ah, oh, you just keep praying and nothing's happened. But verse 16 says this, therefore we do not lose heart. But though our outer man is the king, oh, we can't do the things we used to do. We can't jump off buildings. We can't climb on trees, swing from the trees like we used to do. Some of us did. But I have news. Our inner man is being renewed. Though our outer man is slowing down, our inner man is bringing it up another step. Because we're getting ready to get out of here. God is preparing the inner man for all eternity. Heaven awaits for those who believe. Amen? This is just training grounds. We're going to trade this old body in. We're going to have a new body. Oh, what old bluegrass songs comes to mind. Ain't no grave going to hold my body down. That's bluegrass. Ain't no grave going to hold my body down. That's singing a bluegrass. Meet me, Jesus, meet me. Meet me in the middle of the air. Talking about catching us away. Can I hear an amen? Boop. Something. See, when I read these words, I say, I have nothing to complain about. I'll end it with this story. It's a bit of a personal story, not for me, but more for my brother. My oldest brother's wife had died relatively young, 40-ish, 40-ish. Judy was 40-ish. She had severe diabetic, a young person. She wasn't expected to live, as I understand it, in her 20s, but she outlived all that. And when she passed away, Kermit had brought the children, the, the girls, to a Sunday school class, come back to get, pick her up for church. And she had passed. And she, Kermit was just devastated. She, he, he didn't get a chance to say goodbye to her. But Kermit found the word that she underlined, and it's this very word that she underlined in her Bible was these, this passage. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though our outer man is decaying, yet our inner man is being renewed. So she was thinking about past, the present. Right now, the present may seem just absolutely insane. It may be absolutely impossible, right? The present, sometimes the things that we're going through, just saying, this is just, I can't take no more what is really important. Is that I, the, is, the most important thing is that I bring it to Jesus. You see, even when my doubts come, oh, Pastor, you have doubts? Oh, yeah, I'm like, oh. The, the old, listen, Discouragement is real. I'm not saying I'm discouraged, but I've been discouraged. But if you're, if you're discouraged today, it shows that you're human. It shows your need to be encouraged. You're a candidate to be encouraged. Purpose of church. Worship God. Edify the body. Encourage one another. You've been in the battle all week, maybe in the months previous, you've been feeling just heavy. Why is it so hard? 
And I don't know where I got this phrase. I probably heard it from somebody on the job. Why is life so hard? You know, like, I kind of made a joke out of it. Somehow we've got to know where to go. And he's here. Jesus. Will you just pray a prayer like this? Lord Jesus, you see where I'm at, what I'm going to. We don't know how to understand. We don't know what we're going to do for sure, but we're going to trust you right now. You are going to lead us. With every situation. Our future is in your hands. We have a Eternity all awaiting for us, but until then, help us to live with purpose, to live with clarity, with not letting the enemy steal our joy or steal anything from us. We want to take authority in Jesus' name to be the people of God by the authority of Jesus Christ. I speak health in people's bodies today. Speak long life. I speak the word that brings hope where there's discouragement. I pray for encouragement to come in just a short while. We're soon to be home with you, Jesus. But let us be found faithful to the end. So we give you praise. We depend upon you. We, our hearts are yours. Help us to walk with you now this week in Jesus' name. Amen.